guys, we are in uh, Tim Hortons having a coffee, coffee and uh, having a donut. And I'm saying we because uh, I got a guy over here. What's his name? Barkley Bennett. Barkley Bennett. We'll uh, probably just set up the camera over here and have a good conversation. <laughs> So you said you uh, you were driving bus, eh? Yeah, I, I um, well, started in 74. Okay. When, uh, you know, it's like you're hiring like there was no tomorrow. And uh, it was good, like, and of course the thing is with the job, it's obviously it's a unionized environment, but seniority prevailed. So the more men you got behind you, the better the pickings were. Okay. And, the last 17 years there, so basically halfway through my career there, I just went straight uh, spare, 5.45 a.m. spare in the morning. Okay. So uh, going spare, you got the hours if you wanted a big day. Mm -hmm. Near the end with all the house rules and everything, like the truckers were complaining, you know, it's got to be a level playing field, play fair, you know, because like, guys like me with seniority, if I went for the hours, well obviously I was putting in more than 13 or so hours you're allowed per day. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they capped the hours kind of thing. And it was all in the end when my career was winding down, so you know. <laughs> it's like everything else, you can't teach an old dog any tricks. <laughs> yeah. But it was a means to an end. I enjoyed it, but then I guess ten years. Actually, to tell you the truth, ten years in, ten years into the job of driving bus, I thought about you know switching to tractor trailer. And I have a close, childhood friend who's drove long haul all his life, and he was ready to set me up. But at the same time, like I say, seniority prevails at the job, and if it was getting better, why leave? Right? Yeah, exactly, right? Okay. What so, company were you uh, driving bus for? OC Transport. Public OC. Transport. Okay. Yeah, well, they're the main transit company in Ottawa. Okay. Um, all right. And, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It's like everything else, you know, when you're dealing with the public kids. <laughs> you roll with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I got thick skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need people like that, right, to, uh, to drive the bus, right? But when I, like I say, when, uh, because of my seniority position, I decided against, I could have had, you know, I could have jumped into driving a private trailer, and it was still an eight, in the early 80s, it was still, you know, a viable <laughs> thing. And, uh, what were some of the things that you uh, enjoyed about the bus? Um, well, the fact, like, I guess, sorry, in the end, being able to, because use my seniority, and, but, uh, I, it takes very little to amuse me. Okay. And, you know, like, I, I really wasn't, you know, it's, you get, like, you get a lot of these lonely hearts club band people who get on late at night and want to talk to you, and, I'll talk, but you know, for a little while, and then I kind of shut up. You know? Oh, okay. But uh, that's like everything else. Say. I, I guess, like I was from like the old school, like and uh, you know, because I mean, the style and the routine and the way they train you to do the job today uh, doesn't compare to how you grew up. Yeah, and I was trained back then. Like back then, like you got to be so politically correct today. Like I mean, if I was to give you a five of the best across the shops for being lippy back then, well, it's a level playing field. Today, if I was to do that, yeah. oh, you'd be in trouble, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a cop one time. I had a kid. He spit at me. And he missed, and he says, "I hope you gave him a good five of the best." But I mean, if I had done that today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but, so you uh, you've been uh, uh, living in this area for a long time now, eh? Yeah, yeah. I well, like I say, in '89 we bought a house not too far from here in Fernie, and then 
when the kids, my kids got old enough, well, you know, I got tired of reaching in my pocket to give them change, so I, we moved in town to let them, get them established, okay. and then we lived there for a few years, and then uh, we uh, decided when I was ready to retire, we'd move back out here, and I knew, I knew the area. Yeah. We had, the first house we had, we had sold it, and then uh, later on, like I say, we had bought a place in Orleans for a bit, and then we moved back. Oh really? You lived in Orleans? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we uh, we go the, to Louisiana. They're uh, close to uh, New not or, not New Orleans. Oh, not New Orleans. Oh. Orleans, Ontario. They have separate oh. east of Ottawa. Oh, okay. All right. Now we're speaking about something totally different. <laughs> no, no, I'm Canadian. <laughs> through oh, <okay>. and through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you uh, you have like a hobby farm or just uh, just a regular house. Little okay. matchbox style has big enough for me and the wife. So yeah, so. nice. Keeps me busy. Yeah. So did you uh, you drove truck though, right? I did. I tried, but like I say, was never it for you? No. No. Okay. Like I say, my chum, uh, my childhood friend. Like I take trips. I take at least once week, one week a year. Okay. I take a trip with him. And mm. Like I back in, I guess the uh, late seventies. He was doing a lot of, well, he was working for a company called in, uh, Frozen Goods West in uh, Brooks, Alberta. He'd pick up a load of hanging oh, yeah. beef in the back. Yeah. He drove for that Kenyan distributors for a while before they went uh, bankrupt or out of business. Yeah. Hmm. So how long have you been uh, watching my channel? Well, I just... Pretty well, be a good year anyway. Oh, really? Because uh, I got onto it like I was looking for stuff, like you know, you always have that itch for driving or seeing how everybody else does it. Yeah. And you know, you you search around for the ones that, well, like yourself and Larry, that you know, it's a mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, and like I like like what is it, 42 North Side? Like I, yes. you know, to see the Northern Ontario, you know. Well, even just coming here, I mean, it's been a while since I've been, you know, this side of, you know. Yeah. Because I normally just take old 17 to head into Ottawa. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like for us, well, for example, Montreal, from where I live, it's just as easy to take old 17 to Hawkesbury and then swing up onto the 417 again just before the border. Yeah. Okay. See, that's what I was saying. Like for me to go into Ottawa is six to seven kilometers. Mm -hmm. Whereas come here, it's just a little over twenty. Yeah. To come to here. Right? Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, because wow. the wife thought I was going to head into Ottawa. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, where, where, where is there actually a place to stop in Ottawa? Any of us where the big trucks, right? Not really. Not really. I mean, uh, you've only uh, there's one like when you're coming. If you're coming down 17, the Trans Canada Iron Prairie, there's a. Uh, truck stop there it's uh, it, uh i forget the name of it but ashton oh yeah okay and then you've got nothing well there's a blinking you miss a little petrocan card lock at uh right at the industrial there innocent industrial uh, yeah i'm not very familiar yeah. with uh, with this area because i don't go this area very often but as yeah. you probably saw in my videos right that yeah I it's kind of well you know actually i don't blame you uh, it's not a it's not a money making dollar run coming this way because even my chum said when he was with Island, like to come here, it doesn't pay that much because you have to do a lot of deadhead to get back to either run all the way to Montreal to pick a load to come back or yeah. you know or because uh, he was doing a lot of uh, running west or running. To, if he was running Canada, he ran a lot out to Alberta. Mm -hmm. If he ran to the states, he did a lot of the Midwest and then near. Well, he's not driving anymore, but he used to, near the end, he was doing a, like a dedicated turnaround to uh, City of Industry from Toronto. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me ask you something. What is uh, some of the favorite things that you like about my channel? I've got a good sense of humor. Okay. And, um, well, you're, uh, you're actually running into guys like myself, like, uh, you know, you yeah. know, when you see, like, 42 Northside, well, like, I mean, you know, yeah. but, uh, 
like I go by my name, you know, my actual birth yeah. name on it. Whereas I had thought at one time of just putting a, a username, like a moniker. Yeah. But it wouldn't let me do it, so. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah, I... And, um, well, you know, you're, you're like Larry, too. You're experimenting with different ways to do it. And so yeah. far, you know, I'm, I go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I'm a very good friend of, uh, of Larry. Uh, me and him, we, we talked about yeah. uh, this meeting here earlier, oh, yeah. too. Yeah, so he knows. You see, I, I, uh, like, I guess when Larry was going through, uh, you know, like, Larry wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. And, you know, there's a few times there where, you know, you could see where he expressed himself. And I emailed him and said, you know, Larry, I'm with you, bud. And, you know, I explained a little bit about me, you know. Yeah. And, so, yeah, yeah. Now uh, you're uh, pretty hard to describe. <laughs> you know what I like is uh, you know I have no dislikes. No, or should I heard it? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Make, you know, well, I mean everybody. Uh, probably everybody has, has their has, yeah their you know, opinion. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has their opinion. I like to voice my opinion and. That's just me, you know. I, mm -hmm. I say it the way you, the way it usually is, you know. I, I don't like to talk around about stuff, so mm -hmm. I know I've gotten and shit, especially from the company one time for. Oh, you yes. one video, yeah, yeah, you did about that, yeah. Well, yeah. and I'm sure they're not going to be too pleased about uh, the videos that I'm going to have the next week here either about uh, talking about uh, the shutdown that the guy got there and stuff, because they actually told me that. Not to say anything negative about the company. Well, I'm saying that is the truth, and that's the facts, and the facts are on the internet as well. Mm -hmm. They they can see the ratings of the company. Mm -hmm. So why should it be that the internet can have it and I can't talk about it? Right, right, right. So I know that's the part about being politically correct. You doctorize and cross your T's with me. Yeah. 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 Do you, um, isn't Penner part of the Manitoulin family? And not really. They are connected right now. They have some contracts together now. Yeah. Because uh, Penner sold uh, their LTL from Toronto to Winnipeg. Right. And they also sold a couple of other LTL loads uh, to them. So we are sort of holding still what used to be our loads, but now we're holding it from Manitoulin. Mm -hmm. But not as far as I know that they are related. I don't know. But I mean, I don't know too much about the heads up there, anyways. You know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just paid to drive, like me. Yeah, I just, I just paid to drive, and that's <laughs> the <thing>, you know. <laughs> I just, I just drive my truck, and that's my own truck. It's paid for, and that's as long nice. as, as long as I can stay out of trouble, I, I don't want to go in the office and talk to nobody. You know, I mind my own business, and I'm busy enough. <laughs> well, you know, that was basically my outlook in the job. Like, I came in, did my hours, and yeah. the only time I used my seniority was at the booking. If there was a run there that I wanted, and I yeah. kept my hands in my pockets, and the expressionist didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd, admit, you'd be amazed how people could read your expressions, your face, oh, and yes. look at something. On it, because it's basically all the runs are posted on a wall, right? Yeah. And you go down by seniority and you look at the one you want, like you have all kinds of pickings, but like you say, your seniority gets you the cream of the cream, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, what are uh, some of the stories you can tell me that have happened on the, on the bus when you was uh, driving the bus? Some well, of the interesting things. Um, first three years on the job, I couldn't get out of March for hitting something. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the, uh, first one, I was coming up, like we had this one area, like you, call, you have all the express runs come from the east and come from the west, and you have a central point downtown, the Mackenzie King Bridge where the National Defense Headquarters is, and the Rita Center's on the north side. I'm coming up to the, and I have an old uh, silver side, and it's about a, it would have been about a 70s in the 70 year, 1970 year, mm -hmm. and I'm coming up into the bay, and I have three military types standing because it's the last stop, eh? And they're standing right beside me, and there's another bus in front, and it's you know on black ice in the top of a steel bridge, like you get that kind of slippy. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. 
I'm pulling in there and I'm slowing right down. I'm doing all of about four or five mile an hour because there's a bus in the bus bay. And he's not supposed to be there. He should be gone to wait his time, his extra time at the beginning of his next run, not stay there. Right? So I'm coming in and the three lads are standing beside me. Two of them are in the steps there and one is right beside me. And they're saying to me, they all said in unison, you're not going to stop it. <laughs> I said, no, I'm trying, but I'm, you, you, you hammer the brake, well then you're all yeah. right. So all I could do is line up. And of course, the old buses had like a bubble window, like at the front, it kind of had a, like a bit like that. Okay. Anyway, just, just at the point of impact, and I was, I was just enough like, like that, right? Uh -huh. The other driver is standing, he's got his feet like pigeon toed, he's standing on this bumper, he's got a hand holding onto the wiper and he's cleaning the sleeper. Oh my. Like that, eh? We lost him. So we all scattered it to the front and here he is lying on the, looking up, holding onto the wiper like that. <laughs> he says, what the beep beep? <laughs> oh, that's how funny shit. And of course, you know, he is like, you know, he's senior to me, so he starts ripping into me. So the two mili the three military types, they're standing there. And one of them said, whoa, whoa, boy, you know. <laughs> so I called the supervisor, and, well, they were calling inspectors back in the day, and he comes, and old lady lord, he looks at his bus, he looks at my bus. There's no damage, but just that he tore the wipe up, kind of his. So, he and the other driver, of course, he figures he's he's got this ace day. Well, Eddie said to him right off the bat, he tore his trip off and said, what's the time? So he told him, and he says, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be waiting your time at the beginning of the year. Well, my windows, no, 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 no. I still got charged 25%. Like, we have a percentage system for accidents. Oh, okay. okay. So I still got 25, charged 25%, but still. <laughs> Basically, all my uh, numerous points on the three accidents. Other than that, I nothing really on the bus itself, like from people doing stupid things. So, or... oh, I mean, I mean, that that's like an everyday occurrence. You know? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the most funniest that you? Uh... Well, I had a kid come on one time, and he. He got mousy with me, and he had a long music box, you know, okay. like his, I don't know what kind of instrument it was. <laughs> and he, he got at me, and he started, and he started, and I kept looking at him, like I'm kind of, you know, like, you know, I'm going through the motions, trying to yeah. tell him to come on in through the door, because I figured, sure enough, that, you know, that the door's going to ca catch on his box. Yeah. I made good sauce. <laughs> sure enough, closed on his box, and of course he reefs on it, and it comes through, and he starts his blessing me and down the floor he goes and he skids all the way down the floor at <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, I uh, you know like like I said before like the job I you know is like a means to and I, I never really socialized with any of the other drivers because I mean oh, it, really? it could be some are good and some are bad but then you know like I just basically I was in too much of a hurry to get home mm. I guess that's part of the reason why I never made it, would have made it as a trucker. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Well, of course, my wife, her dad was a gravel hauler all his life, so he was gone he, when, you know, when the, he went where the work was, right? Yeah. He just was in about 100 miles from home, and he'd stay there during the week and then come home on the weekend. And, oh, really? Yeah. Well, I think I will use the restroom and then uh, we'll try and get out of here okay i guess we will have to say goodbye to uh bradley yeah barkley barkley yeah i always say bradley i don't know why but <laughs> just think of sesame street and the dog <laughs> well it was a pleasure meeting you up yes. here today right. and uh, we will get out of here yeah. we got a load to deliver so we will uh see you down the road somewhere yeah so yeah. thanks for joining me yeah. and uh been a pleasure really thanks you See you guys.